Hey, it's your local fish keeper Sabrina. How's everyone doing? I wish you all the happiness in the world. A quick disclaimer before we start today's video. There are many ways of how to go about things puffer fish prophylactic treatment wise and this is just my way of doing things. It's pretty simple so I thought I'd share it with everyone. Also, this is not a figure eight puffer care guide video. I do this treatment with all my new puffers. But for the purpose of this video, we will use Gilbert, my figure eight puffer fish, as an example. Let's begin by choosing a puffer fish at the fish store. When choosing a puffer fish, my best advice would be to choose the healthiest looking bunch of the lot, unless you are confident enough to rescue and save a puffer fish. By the healthiest, I mean one that has the best looking fins, no blisters, no cottony fins, no redness, no white spots, one with a round belly, as very thin looking ones tend to have internal parasites, one that is active and most aware and curious of its surroundings. You can also ask the people working at the store if their puffers have been eating and what they've been feeding them. Take note of other puffers in the same display tank if they have any noticeable signs of diseases as it might be infective and something to look out for when bringing your puffer home. Now, I've gone ahead and placed him in the small cycled holding tank. I don't recommend having a quarantine tank of this size as water parameters fluctuates very fast and a lot of monitoring is needed. I would treat him in his tank since he'll be in a solo tank by himself but unfortunately, the tank has not fully cycled yet at this point. First things first, I would put food in to see if my new puffer has an appetite. Gilbert was pretty hungry and it is a good sign that he's eating. If your puffer doesn't eat straight away, don't worry, just wait for them to settle down. You can do this by switching off the lights or by placing them in a dimly lighted room. This part is going to be a bit hard but try to leave it alone for an hour or so and not to stand too close to the tank. Now that I know Gilbert is eating, let's move on to the next step. It's the next day and I am preparing a special medicated shrimp meal for Gilbert. I always deworm my new puffers as puffer fish are mostly wild caught and they tend to have some amount of internal parasites in them. For this purpose, I use anti-lapse, anti-fluke and warmer medicine, which is basically flubendazole. You can add this medicine directly in your tank. I, however, do not feel comfortable enough doing so as the tank size is way too small for my liking. That's why I'm soaking the food instead. This is one prophylactic step I don't skip, especially for puffers. To help add a little flavor to the medicated food, I'm going to add in garlic guard, a flavor enhancer for finicky eaters. Coat the shrimp with the medicine and add in a capful of garlic guard. I use a skewer to poke holes in the shrimp to help the mixture soak in. Garlic guard smells quite funky and strong, and yes, it smells exactly like garlic. Now that's done, let it soak in for 15 to 30 minutes prior to feeding. Let's see if Gilbert likes it. When approaching your new puffer and introducing new food to them, do be gentle by approaching them slowly. You can see here that my hand is a bit shaky as I was trying to feed and film at the same time. Now that he's into the food, I try to check for any signs of illness or noticeable scars. In Gilbert's case, his tail is chomped off at the top part and there are some noticeable bite marks on his chin. 
I'm glad that it's nothing too serious so good water parameters and time will heal them. I do not do any other prophylactic treatment with medicine besides the dewormer medicine unless it is absolutely necessary. Once it's done, I remove the food from his tank. Depending on what food you feed your puffer, your puffer's feces should turn out something like this. If your puffer's feces or poop is stringy white and sometimes wriggling out of your puffer's anus, that is a strong indication of internal parasites. If you've been following Bee Fishy, you'd remember that Gilbert had to crash in with Artemis and Ness, my green spotted puffers, for a while. I do not recommend this, especially if your puffers are aggressive, but I am pretty lucky as both Artemis and Ness are pretty docile at their age. During this time, Gilbert's fins and skin managed to heal up, and he's looking better than ever. And good news, Gilbert's tank is finally cycled and he can move into his new home. I hope today's video is helpful. Do like and subscribe if you like to see more content and especially do comment down below as I love hearing your thoughts and reading your comments. Until then, see you next time!